When we hear about Rwanda, we are often reminded of the horrific genocide that occurred there in 1994, claiming the lives of nearly 800,000 people. But what we don't hear about Rwanda is the incredible progress made along the path to reconciliation and recovery. Since the genocide that saw the mass murder of the Tutsi population at the hands of the Hutu government, the country has been grappling with reconciliation. The ruling Rwandan Patriotic Front, or RPF, has instituted a broad social engineering project designed to never again allow the scourge of genocide to take root in the hearts and minds of Rwandans. National and local courts, called Gachacha courts, held trials of those accused of genocide crimes and a National Unity and Reconciliation Commission was established in 1999. The commission oversees peace education, trauma counseling, research into the causes of the conflict, and training of local leaders. <laughs> One of the areas in which the reconciliation process has shown strength is in a gender-inclusive approach. But according to some observers, there's a major hurdle with the Rwandan reconciliation process as an essentially top-down approach. With this kind of program, there isn't much room for diversity. The concept of one Rwanda may overlook different accounts of the genocide. Academics like Susan Thompson warn that there needs to be a more individual grassroots approach. So we have a, a situation in Rwanda where elites tend to put forward ideas that are quite at odds with how regular people live their lives. And this is not new per se under the RPF, it's something that has deep historical roots in Rwanda. So if I were to make a suggestion, it would be to allow trust to emanate from the government for the people in hopes that over time there would be space for healing, space for dialogue, space for conversation. This is Jeff Walsh, reporting for Peace News.